What is the secret to health and physical well-being? I'm not a doctor. Come next week, Friday and Saturday and you hear a structured explanation as to how to be healthy. But I can tell you a few things. Number one, gluttony kills. Hello? Gluttony kills. Number two, if you don't eat well, you will die. I can tell you that one. If you don't eat well, you will do what? And I have scriptures. Genesis 42, 1 and 2. Jacob met his sons and said, why do we sit and look at one another here? I hear that there is corn in Egypt. Verse 2. Get you theater and buy for us that we may live and not die. So when people don't eat and when they don't eat well, they die. Everything taking bread from your table, I curse it this night in the name of Jesus. <laughs> While I'm telling you that gluttony is bad, if you do not have sufficient food, you are malnourished, you will die. I can tell you that. Are we together? Number three, inactivity. Medical science will tell us inactivity for an indefinite period deadens your organs till you die. Medicine, medical people, people should buy me a gift after, buy me a gift after Koinonia because I'm doing part of your next week work now inactivity that means laziness is death calling your name laziness is not a sign that you're a big man now let me tell you how it happens in africa as god starts prospering us we start dying because we stop doing many things including thinking in africa if you're a big man it's a taboo to drive yourself it's a taboo to trek out it's a taboo to buy anything it's sometimes it's even a taboo to eat yourself and we think these things are a sign that you have suffered this is your time to enjoy and before you know it sicknesses that have no business finding you they find a lazy inactive person by a, a negative culture driven software wrong definition of prosperity there are people who were healthier when they were poor their real problems started when god blessed them are we together and and this is something that all of us must repent from your house ac your car, AC. Everything, AC. You never take fresh air for the rest of your life till you die. You call it enjoyment. Sitting before a big screen morning till night. Hurting your eyes, hurting the various parts of your body. One leg up, one leg down from morning till night. You have all kinds of servants. Uh, John, go and get me water. Ruth, get me this. And I'm not being sarcastic. I am telling you, it's, a, it's an African cancer. Sometimes because we have suffered too much, you want to draw me to destiny that I've arrived. It's unnecessary. Are we together now? You must make up your mind that this body, you are hosting my spirit for a long time. Who is in agreement with me? You are hosting my body for a long time. If I wake up, every part of my body must wake up. I won't wake up and my hand now refuses to rise up. Mm -mm. Hand, wake up. There's work to be done. I won't wake up and then my eyes will not wake up. No. Speak to your body. I'm telling you, as a principle, I learned that from Kenneth Copeland. Speaks to his organs and say, in the name of Jesus, you are functioning healthy. Nobody will call me one day and say, one part of my heart has collapsed. Let the devil go to hell. In the name of Jesus Christ, he keep at his bones. Keep at his bones. Now, please don't feel bad if you're sick. We're here to pray for you. I know that there are people, but I'm challenging you. This is how to be successful health-wise. And then, there are many things you need to painfully take out of your life. Huh? I don't want to kill anybody's business, but let me tell you the truth. I've taught you that there is death in the pot. Some of you have been eating death many times in a day. Make sure you verify, am I eating life or death? You know how we do it in Africa? Two wraps of swallow with soup all around. Are we together? And literally one quarter or half of chicken, only you. And then two bottles of minerals, no water. No water. You drank water when you were poor. Now you're a rich man, no water. Are we together? And then you eat everything. And while you are doing it, you are listening to my message. Mm, it's right. Apostle is preaching powerfully. Plus one minus one is what? Help me. Plus one minus one. Zero. 
That's the reason why fasting is good. Aside from the spiritual benefit, fasting helps you. There are times you just shut down and give your body peace for a while. Let it work on the things you are already damaging those things. Let clean out those things. I'm telling you, if you're under medical advice, don't fast as the doctors recommend. But I'm telling you, once you are alive and healthy, if you eat every day and every time, you will still die. If you don't eat, you will still... You see how you, everything must be in moderation. As for me, I plan to live long. And among my many strategies is to eat well. As God begins to help you, please live yesterday and start eating well. There are some of you to buy clean water. You say, no, I won't spend this kind of money. God forbid. You see that something about yesterday still wants to drag you. You will not mind fetching water directly from the well with cup and drink. I say, this is not a kill. I've, you know, all those kind of things. I hope you are not just laughing. When people are dying in your presence every day, say, I will be healthy. I will be healthy. Say it again, I will be healthy. Wives, ladies, learn how to cook healthy food. Learn how to cook healthy food. Don't kill your family because they married you into the house. Learn how, I'm giving you an honest advice. Don't be offended. I'm sorry, this is koinonia, but learn how to cook healthy food. Are we together? Learn how to cook. Learn how to cook healthy food. And I'm praying for you in the name of Jesus Christ. If there is anybody here that the devil has already put a death sentence, that before the end of the year, maybe because of carelessness, some of you were smoking before, some of you were drinking before, you've damaged your liver, damaged your organs. I pray for you, by the power that raised Christ from the dead, may the mercy of God bring a resurrection to your organs. May the mercy of God bring a resurrection to your organs. May the mercy of God bring a resurrection to your organs. May the mercy of God bring a resurrection to your organs. In the name of Jesus, Number four, your purpose and assignment. I won't speak quick, so much there. There are only three keys I will give you here. Discovery, refining, and deploying. That is the key to working in purpose. I refer you to the book, Discovering Your Potentials by Dr. Miles Monroe. Then I refer you to my teachings also on purpose. I've done a number of teachings on purpose. But here's what I will tell you. You are as fulfilled to the degree to which you discover refine and serve with excellence make sure you pray that you'll be taken as part of the school of ministry students by the way soon we'll give the announcement for the next session and make sure that you start praying right now prayer works <laughs> hallelujah so that you are absorbed and there you have an opportunity to learn learn very strategically the matters of purpose and destiny but the key here the rule of thumb is that you have to discover it's been there you don't invent your purpose you discover it you were sent with it and there are many ways to discover it number one the use of your potentials when you discover your potentials potentials are pointers to your purpose i would always say it this way if you see an individual holding a stethoscope what do you call that individual a doctor when you see an individual holding a knife and i mean um, um, a hammer and a nail that person is called a Thank you. You see that now? So you can use your potentials as pointers to your purpose. Number two, prophetic revelations and confirmations. God comes to you in dreams, visions, prophetic confirmations. Number three, a byproduct of service. Sometimes service in the house of God is how you really discover what he's put within your heart. Right? So this is just a summary. When you discover your potentials, even if you don't know where you are taking it to, the next thing is to contend to refine it. To refine it oh God has given me the ability to speak you refine it God has given me the ability to sing you refine it God has given me the ability I have very high intellectual acumen refine it and then when you refine it begin to serve look up please the easiest way to begin to serve your purpose is the house of God as a worker are we together now Philip started as a welfare person but he eventually became an evangelist the Bible acknowledges him as an evangelist, but he started with welfare. From there, he discovered his place. You can start as an usher and eventually end as a mighty apostle because as an usher, your gift will now be seen. And one day they will say, lead a small prayer here. And they begin to discern the hand of God upon your life. Gradually, you begin to scale, proving through faithfulness that God can take you higher and higher until one day he will now commit to you your own work. That's how it works. Let's go to number four very quickly who is learning tonight the roadmap 
I won't talk much about finances. Number four or number five now, am I right? Number five is your finances. I wish I had time to drum it. I hope I will take one of, I promise you, it's a promise I'm giving you. Between now and when Koinonia is done, we'll talk about this money thing one more time. Maybe one of this week will come and just touch it again. Are we together? Because this finance thing is not something you hear once and understand. It's a very stubborn subject. You need to hear and hear again. And file this area, file that area, file that area. Finances, the, the teaching of finances comes with a lot of pride. Because most times people hear it and say, you mean it's this simple until they try it. Then they find out that they were trying to hold water with their hands. Everything just went out. There is a skill to it to make it work. Are we together? But generally, I will tell you this. You prosper to the degree to which you are valuable. You prosper to the degree to which you are favored. You can rest on that. You prosper to the degree to which you are valuable. And you prosper to the degree to which you are favored. The two principal keys that control wealth and abundance is value and favor through relationships. Take this as a rule of thumb. Value, turning your gifts, your ability to products and services, packaging it with excellence and serving it to a targeted consumer base. You call that business, we call that value. Are you seeing that now? The degree to which you are valuable, serving solutions that are needed and useful. The reason why certain professions look more profitable than others is because they solve greater, weightier problems than others. Are we together? If a doctor and a carpenter, an architect is here, most likely the doctor will have more clients because humans are prone to being sick faster. They need health solutions better than even a housing solution. Are we together now? So when it has to do with prospering, there is a spiritual side to it. And listen to all of my messages that I've preached around finances, but I must tell you this. If you are not valuable and you do not refine your value and serve it with excellence, I hate to be a bearer of bad news. You will be poor or you will not be sustainably wealthy. There's a lot of superstition around wealth, especially as proposed by the church. And it's the reason why a lot of non-Christians are laughing and mocking and spiting the church. Because it looks like our entire theology about wealth is centered on giving and giving alone. While giving plays a very major spiritual and even psychological role to wealth, it is not limited to giving alone. Principally, value. There are spiritual laws that connect you, but I've taught you here value. The degree to which you are able to serve products and services that are needed and useful. Are we together? This mic was bought. This pulpit was bought or fabricated. This Bible was bought. This phone was bought. Are we together? The dress that I'm wearing, somebody put this together. Whoever was part of this value chain has had a portion of our finances. It doesn't matter whether the person was a Christian or not. Are we together now? That's how it works. Immediately after service, you are going to a restaurant or you are going to cook at home. The one you bought food from, you paid. The one you are going to, whose restaurant you are going to, are we together now? That person will continue receiving your money provided they are providing value. And then the second angle to it is favor through relationships. Question, when a millionaire gives birth to a son, what business solution did the boy solve to prosper? It's called inheritance. It's not called profit. It's called inheritance. Are we together now? Eventually, his inheritance can be transferred to profit. But at the time, it is called inheritance. So relationships are very powerful. Anybody you sell value to can reward you. But the person that likes you too can bless you. It's not called reward, but it's still money reaching you. And that's the most important thing. Now, when God really wants to power your life, he grants you access to do both. That you are both valuable and he connects you to strategic, profitable, pro-destiny relationships. It doesn't keep you lazy, but it becomes an acceleration for you. There are many people who relationships can give them capital and wisdom can help them do business with the money. And they begin to scale. If you ask them, how were you blessed? They will tell you both relationships and value. Don't depend on relationships alone. It is the way of a lazy man. Even if relationships give you resources, it is wisdom. And learning how to transact that grows your resources. But if the only thing you know is how to transact value, your, your growth rate will be very slow. Are we together now? Because transaction from an economic standpoint is tampered by many nuances, many biases. Relationships are a great leverage in life. Don't ignore them. I am a product of the financial blessings that have come from relationships largely. Relationships are powerful. Are we together now?
You can build a house. You can own an estate. You can have a, a property, whatever it is. But by the time you transact, there are people who have written books. It has blessed them. There are people who have sold their materials, their intellectual property. It has blessed them. Some of you here make clothes. My assignment is to release grace on what you are doing. If there is nothing you are doing, releasing financial grace on it is profitless. Are we together? Lazy people shout amen with empty hands. Visionary people carry their value up and receive blessings on it. When people are lazy, they just shout amen. For what? What are you going to do now? Say nothing. All I know is that somebody will not sleep. We need to be careful. Are we together now? There are others who truly believe that they won't do anything in this life just because they love Jesus. Somebody must give them his house, his car, his clothes, pay their children's school fees while they just sit down and say God is faithful. It's the way of fools. I'm sorry to say it, but it's the way of fools. Even as a man of God, I don't expect that kind of result. That you are immune by priesthood, but I still believe that my hands are blessed, my mind is blessed. That favor will come, but I will not abuse the grace of God. Is someone learning now? In the name of Jesus, the spirit of laziness around your life, I curse it right now. Yeah. Hear me? If you are troubleshooting your financial problems, the first area to go to is whether or not, whether or not you are valuable. Are you valuable then to who? If you are only valuable to yourself, you are flattering yourself because you cannot pay yourself. You will have to serve that value to another outside of yourself. And if the person does not need the value you carry, then unfortunately there will not be a reward. Some of you are valuable enough to be commended, not to be rewarded. Are we together? We can clap for you for the value you carry, but it's not exceptional enough, it's not refined enough, it's not packaged enough. Value must be translated to productivity. Productivity is when value is translated to goods and services that are now refined, served with excellence to a targeted consumer base. Then you are rewarded, not just commended. And then favor through relationships. I have taught you sincerely so that the easiest way to prosper is through relationships. Who hates you does not matter. I will say this to you endlessly, but who likes you matters. May someone like you before December. Yeah. Enough to contribute to your financial laughter. Yeah. Are we together now? I expect blessings from favor every day, including finances. I'm saying it without shame. I'm saying it without any sense of apology. Are we together? But then, after you check the issue of value, check the issue of relationships. Now, let me tell you this. I'm not teaching you to be parasitic in your relationship. Or to say, you, you are poor, you can't be my friend. Apostle, I've thought that prosperity comes from relationship. I found out that I've, I have too many poor people around me. That's, mm, don't do that. Because the person you are laughing at today, God can exalt the person. But I will tell you one truth. I will tell you one truth. I will tell you one truth. When you are transformed, your relationship will rise to match your transformation. If everybody around you is poor, I'm telling you sincerely, I'm not insulting them, but it's a report card to how your thinking is. You can steal the contact of a rich man from somebody's phone. Call the person and see whether he will pick your number. The fact that he's not picking your number means he does not recognize you. You have not gotten to that realm. So rather than embarrassing yourself, contend by light to a level where those who you call great today will also call you great. Is someone learning now? Yes. I didn't even know when the contact in my phone changed, quite honestly. It was not something that was intentionally done. And I can't remember deleting the old ones, but I can't find them. That somebody you desire will be the one to collect your phone and say, let me type my number to be sure you are there. You see, everybody blesses according to his riches in glory. If somebody is poor, he cannot bless you. You get what I'm saying? He may pray for you. He may intercede for you. He may wait upon the Lord for you. But as far as financial blessing is concerned, you will not get anything. Let me tell you sincerely, don't waste your time. It is wealthy people that can help give you the leverage of wealth. It is the truth. It is the truth. Pray for everybody to be around your life. But in this season, pray for quality people established by the mercy of God that they will look upon you with kindness and extend benevolence to you whilst God helps you to solve their problem too. These are very uncomfortable truths, especially because you are saying it in church. But the truth is still the truth. 
a poor man can pray for you but a poor man cannot help you financially are we together yeah. if everybody around my life is poor I will just believe I'm sent to them and I'll start praying for my real helpers to come around hallelujah do you believe what you're hearing but then I will tell you this and even if this is where we stop tonight that is still fine there is a grace that prospers there is an anointing that prospers I've proven it with my life it is true if it's something someone told me you can say ah you are just talking nonsense but the things we have seen the things we have heard by the mercies of God the things that our hands have handled are we together now honestly speaking believers hear me there is a grace from heaven that comes on the head of a man and redefines your financial possibility and for someone tonight whilst you are seated quietly in the name of Jesus like the dew of Hammon in addition to the value you are providing in addition to the strategic relationships you are at a point in your life now where you need help that men cannot give it will take the God of heaven showing you mercy otherwise you will wake up early in the morning you will sleep late in the night you will rigmarole the doors of destiny even the doors of value and it will still not work for you I pray for you now wherever you are provided you came here with hunger this grace that can help men that becomes a, a an accelerator to your your financial journey may that grace rest upon your life may that grace rest upon your life may you become a financial wonder in addition to your value in addition to relationships may that grace rest upon you oh rest on me oh rest on me oh hallelujah the goal of the teaching tonight is to connect desires with outcomes it's like a spiritual troubleshooting are we together now I'm running for you a list so that you will go back as you are listening this is what mentorship is about you can now examine what area of your life that is not working I wish we had time for me to touch a bit on relationships but we have to pray now but relationships are very vital some of you are alone you are lonely nobody to help you you know many people but you did not connect to them listen the one who helps you is the one you connect to not the one you know you can know the person but if you are not connected help will not flow from them to you are we together now I know this senator you may not be lying but you will never receive help from them I know this man of God knowing people does not benefit you relationally. You must learn how to connect. Kamalakostiata. Connect. And the way you connect, let me tell you this. Live tonight knowing that relationships are investments. The same way you do real estate. You do oil and gas. My brothers, my sisters, relationships are investments. It is fraud to want a return over any investment you did not do. Are we together? When you are catching 419ers, Catch those who want a return from investments, they did, relationships they did not invest to because it's fraud. It's amazing how many people do not invest in lives. They just show up and want a stake. No, it doesn't work that way. If you were not there when I'm crying, when you see me smiling, rejoice from afar. Don't come near me. Are we together now? You can earn a living believing in people. You can earn a living believing in people. That I take the risk to believe in you. If you fail, I have nothing to lose. But if you succeed, I will become part of the foot soldiers that believed in you until you're rising. There are people today, whether they do business or not, the truth is that they have done the business of risking their credibility to believe in those rising. And fortunate for them, it worked. It worked. Are we together? It worked, oh. Some of you don't believe in anybody. You run away from people while you are checking with the side of your eye. Once you see a crown on their head, you run and come and say, remember I was here. They say, no, sir, that is fraud. Show me the sign of blood from my tears. Show me the nails, the sign of nails. Did you help me carry the cross? Let me tell you this. Make up your mind that you will start believing in people. 
as you come for koinonia you may see others no car no nothing but they are shouting amen every day you see them rising don't laugh at them oh the day fire falls on their head in one month they will come and testify and say i got a job somebody did whatever and you tell them sir that man that helped you do you know he's the one i've been trying to give a contract and you say i don't know you i don't know you joshua selman i know are we together and let me say this with all due respect even for men of god don't appear in the life of a successful man and just call him your son what did you do in his life? Don't show up in the life of people and just claim a stake. They are not idiots. They may respect you, but they are not stupid. They know where the anointing came from. That's why a lot of people say, can you imagine I did this and nobody came back to me? It's a lie. It's impossible to invest in building people and selflessly and God leaves them and they forget you. Don't go around stealing sheep and claiming you invested in people. As men of God, is it not funny how we are? We don't call any sick person son. We don't call any, any person who is having a mental problem son. We only pick, cherry pick successful people and say, you are my son, you are my daughter. How don't you believe in the person who is sick until he's, he's transformed to become a sign and a wonder? And he can say, I remember when I came, I was weak. I was in debt like the man of David. Look, you have transformed me to a mighty warrior. We become your foot soldiers. You will never be hungry, not when we are standing. Let me tell you the truth. And I submit to you, there are people, even preachers, who have spent their lives investing in lifting people. Today that those people are lifted, no matter what you say, those people will die defending the ones who were there for them. Relationships are investments. Don't waste it. Some of you see our little children and push them away. You are pushing your house. You are pushing breakthrough. You are pushing a, a position for your children. Mutual respect is the way of the wise. Are we together? I'm showing you a roadmap today. I have learned this from people and God has placed wonderful senior mentors and people in my life. And one of the advice they gave me, I've seen it in their lives, that they spend their lives investing in quality relationship. You will never mention any ministry in Nigeria that they don't have someone there. Someone they raised, someone they blessed, someone they fed when he did not have food. Now he's a governor. Now he's working somewhere and he can come and say, I'm still your boy. Yo. They call me excellency, but I'm still your boy. What do you want me to do? Please give this person a job. Consider it done. To you is a sign and a wonder. To them is a destiny they programmed. Listen. Leave Koinonia tonight with this consciousness. Start programming your 2025. Don't allow it to come and meet you alone. Don't allow your heaven to be brass and your earth iron because you ignore people. As pastors, respect people. Don't look down on them. Just because they are listening to you. God is working on them. God is lifting them. If you are a rich man today, respect those who are coming. Because you don't know, you have reached your plateau. But the people who are rising, you don't know how far they will go. Are we together now? If there is anything I've learned, is that relationships are investments. If people really matter to you, then invest in their lives. If you don't invest in their lives, don't claim they matter to you and stay away from their success when God leaves them because you have no stake there. Hallelujah. Praise the name of the Lord. There are people today, I don't expect them to take me so serious because I cannot remember making any kind of direct strategic investment in their lives. I didn't make any investment in that kind of relationship. It would be stupid of me to expect certain levels of returns. Whatever I get, I am grateful because that spells the kind of investment I made. But there are relationships that were intentional. They are still intentional. God brought somebody to learn. All your destiny helpers are around you. They are not yet destiny helpers, but they will be destiny helpers tomorrow. Don't ignore them. That house boy in your house, don't ignore them. That lady washing your plate, don't ignore them. They may not have money now, but they are listening to the word every day. God is lifting them every day. That neighbor, pay attention to people. Scatter your seeds. Give a portion to seven, yea to eight. You do not know the disaster that shall come upon the earth. Are we together now? You see somebody, good afternoon, sir. Oh, uh, you're an architect. Oh, God bless you. Something falls on the ground. Let me pick it for you, sir. You may think it does not matter. One day he will look at you among the crowd and say, you are looking for a job. I remember you. What did you study? 
you will say, I'm even ashamed to say it. Say, it doesn't matter. You were the one who were kind to me in Koinonia. Come, you have the job now. I can tell you testimonies of people, and I say that with all humility. And I thank all of you here who have given people jobs because they belong to this family in addition to their competence. On their behalf, I'm saying, God bless you. But there have been people, they didn't have to do any interview. The moment they mentioned Koinonia, I said, that's it. Provided the value you can, you can do all of that, come on board. May your name be a key, not a padlock. Yeah. I say it to you as I ask you to stand now. May your name be a key and not a padlock. Yeah. That if your name has locked the door of destiny over your children, locked the door of destiny over everyone, that the, when people want to succeed, they have to deny you to succeed. They can't tell people they know you because the moment they mention your name, a door that was open becomes closed. I pray for you. Whatever has made your name a padlock, may mercy scatter that padlock now. In the name of Jesus, the roadmap. Next time you see God lift people and, and you see people succeed in the kingdom, don't say it was a mistake. These are the kingdom principles among others. For tonight, I did a troubleshooting for you across these various areas of your life. Go back and listen to this message again. Point out where you have not been practicing it or where you have not found light. Add more materials to it and pray in the spirit and watch your life rise. As for me, this journey I've begun with the Holy Ghost. This journey I've begun with a de in destiny. It is from glory to glory. From glory to glory. This I'm, I'm speaking to myself now. It is from glory to glory. Never having a better yesterday. In the name of Jesus Christ. Open your mouth in one minute and begin to give God praise for what you have heard tonight. A thought-provoking examination of your true state. Take time to pray. The roadmap. The roadmap to excellent spirituality. The roadmap to transformation. The roadmap to health and vitality. The roadmap to purpose, destiny. The roadmap to financial vitality. The roadmap to strategic pro destiny relationships. Bible says narrow is the way, straight is the way, narrow is the way. Very few people go there and yet it leads to life. Broad is the way that leads to destruction. Go ahead and pray. Thank God for what you have heard and pray for grace tonight. I obtain grace, I obtain grace, I obtain grace. Someone pray, I obtain grace. To be vibrant spiritually, to contend for transformation. To be healthy and physically vibrant. To walk in purpose, to walk in my destiny. I obtain grace to excel financially. I obtain grace to invest in strategic relationships. In Jesus mighty name we pray. Do me a favor ladies and gentlemen. I want you to please promise your destiny that you will listen to this message again please just believe in what god is making out of your life don't assume you got everything go back with childlike faith listen again prayerfully listen again like a student get your ipads get your notebooks your laptops and listen and write and pray every one of these aspects one by one one by one tonight i was like a lecturer go back and pray it the area not working in your life then you return with thanksgiving as you see the various facets of your life finally answering and you can tell people that growth and success and excellence is not a mystery that there are principles in the spirit that can help a man here and now to command an indomitable and enviable level of life you believe that give jesus a big hand clap Tonight is someone's hour of salvation. And while standing everybody, I want to give one person the opportunity to at least begin. I have given you a list of six areas. Someone has one area to start with at least, your spiritual life. As it stands, you've never truly made Jesus Lord of your life or you have not taken your spiritual vibrancy, your spiritual vitality, a serious issue. But now on hearing me speak, the Lord is convicting your heart. And you are saying, Apostle, I want to start afresh. Wherever you are, 
I want you to leave your seat very quickly, your bags, your Bibles, everything you came to church with. Give me the honor of leading you to Jesus. God bless you as you come, wherever you are. Please keep clapping. Let's not distract them as they come. Someone has to come to Jesus tonight. And wherever you are, please make your way very quickly. If you are around the balconies, I'd like you to make your way to the front quickly. And if you are saying, Apostle, I want to rededicate my life to Jesus. I want to make things right. Please be on your way. God bless you, my sister. I see a few people coming. God bless you. Those coming from outside, come quickly. Come quickly. God bless you. Koinonia, let's keep appreciating them as they come. God bless you. I want more of you. I want more of you, Jesus. The more I know you, the more I want to know you, Jesus. More of you. Is someone still coming? I want more of you. If you're joining them, come quickly. I want to lead them to pray now. I want more of you, Jesus. The more I know you, the more I want to know you, Jesus, more of you. Thank you so much, brothers and sisters. Let me speak to someone who is following by line, uh, online, by way of internet, and you're saying, Apostle, you may not see me, but I'm part of those who have made this decision. I want to make Jesus Lord of my life. I want to salute you right where you are, your home, across the globe, anywhere at all. Um, as I lead these ones in prayer, I want you to participate. Make sure you pray that prayer too. And the Lord Jesus Christ will be ministering his life and his power to you. Lift your hands for those of you who are in front. I salute you for coming. Say this after me as loud and as clear as you can. Say, Lord Jesus, I love you with all my heart. I believe that you are the son of God. I believe that you died for me. I believe that you rose again for my justification right now i receive jesus into my heart as my savior my lord and my king i declare that i'm a child of god i'm the righteousness of god in christ jesus i obtain grace to live the victorious christian life and i go forward ever and backward never amen Father, thank you so much for my dear brothers and sisters, the many who have come declaring your lordship over their lives. According to the authority of scripture, I declare their sins forgiven, and I pray that today is a new day for them. I call them the righteousness of God in Christ. They are bona fide recipients of eternal life. And I pray the grace to walk in victory, to serve the Lord all the days of their lives. Let it be released upon them. I decree and I declare that they go from glory to glory, grace to grace. For in Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen and amen. God bless you. Please look to my right. That will be your left. I want you to have a word with the counselors. They are waving the placard. And then they'll have a word and a prayer with you very, very quickly. Hallelujah. Lift your hands and receive the blessing for tonight. Father, thank you so much for the word you have brought. In the name of Jesus, we receive this roadmap. And with it, oh God, we declare that we will war in prophecy. We will war with your word until our destinies speak until we step into levels where we command enviable results i decree and declare over everyone under the sound of my voice the grace to follow this roadmap until you are victorious let that grace be released upon you the discipline by the spirit to walk in keeping with these principles until the results speak in your life i release that grace upon you now for those of you who have diligently followed this road, I declare that your profiting appears speedily. 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 In the name of Jesus. For someone, this week, beginning is your week of appearance. Your week of manifestation. Your week of favor. All of these areas I listed in my teaching may you begin to excel in those areas. Excel spiritually. Excel in the area of your mind. Excel in your health. Excel in your assignment. Excel in your finances. 
excel in the area of relationships in the name of Jesus I prophesy over you that no weapon fashioned against you will prosper and every tongue that rises up against you will fall in judgment you are blessed in Jesus name you are favored in Jesus name you experience increase in Jesus name help us arise for your sake the Lord brings resources to you in the name of Jesus Christ the wisdom needed for the next phase of your life receive it the favor needed for the next phase of your life receive it the anointing needed for the next phase of your life receive it in the name of Jesus Christ when men say there is a casting down I speak over you you will say there is a lifting up in the name of Jesus for someone from Sunday till next week Sunday let it be testimonies every day testimonies every day in the morning testimonies at noon testimonies in the evening testimonies even in the night testimonies your going out is blessed your coming in is blessed the mark of favor is upon you the mark of honor is upon you go and excel you are an ambassador of the kingdom may signs and wonders be wrought through your hands in Jesus mighty name we pray amen and amen and together let's share the grace the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, the sweet fellowship of the Holy Spirit. Let it rest and abide with us now and forever. Amen. Surely together. All the days of our lives as we dwell in the house of the Lord forever and ever. Amen. God bless.